Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will cover the Smith Mora Gambit. And it is the position starting after e4 c5. We go for our beloved Sicilian defense. And now white goes d4, sacrificing a pawn and immediately challenging the center. Now, of course, we capture on d4, and now white goes c3. And here I should mention that we have this option to go knight to f6, and after e5, we go knight to d5, c capture on d4. And we simply transport back to the Alep and Sicilian, or also known as the C3 variation of the Sicilian defense. But of course, there is no need to do that, we simply capture on C3. Now, knight capture on C3, and here there are a few ways that we can play, but one thing you should remember not to do is to go knight to f6. Because simply here, white is going to go e5, hitting our knight with tempo, and now there are no good squares for our knight, and we simply have to put our knight back, and this is clearly a bad position. So instead here we simply go e6. And the point here is that since we are not going to put our knight on the f6 square, we're simply going to develop our knight on e7. Knight to f3 by white. And now the setup that we want to achieve is to go bishop to b4, the knight on e7, and the other knight on c6. But here, if we go simply bishop to b4 immediately, white has this annoying move queen to d4. Now white is hitting our bishop and also hitting the g7 square. And there is nothing better that we can do than to simply put our bishop back. And this is obviously a sad move to play, but we can avoid all this if we simply here go knight to c6 first. Now bishop to c4, and now and only now we go bishop to b4. White goes for short castle and knight to e7. And here there is a few ways that white can play. The main move for white is to go knight to b5, but white has other options. He can put his queen on e2, or also he can go queen to c2, or maybe even go e5, even though it's a bad move. So let's start with this one first. If white here goes e5, simply knight to g6, putting more pressure on this pawn. Now queen to e2 defending the pawn. Now simply short castle, and we have a fantastic position. We are threatening to go queen to a5 next, put more pressure on this knight, and also attack this pawn. And also white doesn't have time to remove his knight and then go f4 to support this pawn. And if white has to play moves like rook to e1 to defend the pawn, his position will become very passive. And I don't think the pawn sacrifice is justifiable anymore. So obviously e5 here is a bad move. Let's now see what happens if white goes queen to e2. Now simply short castle, rook to d1 and knight to g6. Bishop to g5 by white and now simply bishop to e7. We should take on e7 and queen take on e7. Knight to b5 trying to exploit this d6 weakness. Now simply a6. Knight to d6, b5 attacking the bishop, bishop to b3, knight to a5, and bishop to c2. And here I simply like to go knight to b7, immediately contest this knight, and if white takes, this is obviously bad. All white did is help us develop our bishop, and this bishop will be fantastic on this diagonal, so this is clearly bad for white. So instead here white goes e5, defending the knight, now simply knight capture on d6, pawn capture on d6, queen to f6, and we have a very solid position. Pawn on d6 might become a weakness in an end game. And also the whole point of what playing Smith Mora Gambit is to go for a quick initiative and try to play for a checkmate. And in this position, white's chances of achieving that are very low. And also we are up a pawn, and I don't think that white's compensation is that much scary. Now let's see what happens if white put his queen on c2. No simply short castle, rook to d1, and knight to g6. Bishop to g5, bishop to e7, bishop capture on e7, and queen capture on e7. Knight to b5 by white, and here we can see the point of queen to c2. If we simply try to play like the previous variation, and we go a6, knight to d6, b5, and the point here is that white doesn't have to go bishop to b3, he simply goes bishop to f1, and now this maneuver knight to a5, knight to b7, is not as powerful anymore because simply knight to a5 doesn't come with tempo. So here instead, we go d5, e take on d5, e take on d5, bishop capture on d5, knight to b4, queen to c3, and knight capture on d5. Rook capture on d5, bishop to e6, and rook to d1. And here we have a slightly better position. It's not that much, but simply because the pawn structure is very symmetrical, but also it's a risk-free position, and we can try to press for an advantage without having to take too much risk. Now it's time to look at White's main continuation, which is to go knight to b5. This is a very direct move and it leads to immediate simplifications. We simply go d5, 
Now e capture on d5, e capture on d5, and now bishop capture on d5. And the white's point here is that after knight capture on d5, he has this move, queen capture on d5. But obviously the point here is that if we capture the queen, there is this move knight to c7. So instead here we go for short castle. And now queen capture on d8, or rook capture on d8. And here again we see that it's a position with completely balanced pawn structure, which means that the only imbalance in the position is that black has the bishop pair. And this must definitely be in our advantage. Okay guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell to get our latest updates. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video.